Hi everyone. Okay, so just checking the parameters for everything and it seems to work. So we're going to start in a minute or two uh, where we left last time creating a, a plugin for Gephi. Posting the resources for this stream. If you are joining, please say hi in the comments. It's always nice. We're going to start super soon. I'm just going to get a glass of water, so back in a minute. Okay, we can start. So for today, we're going to uh, start where we left. And basically, we're going to try to to make progress uh, past the point where we were stuck last time. So the way we're going to work is that uh, I have uh, I have reviewed in the past week I have reviewed the issues we had uh, and I have solved them so I could just you know uh, share with you the, the result but I think that I want to have these streams as a, a real learning experience so we should to to have you to have you follow exactly the steps to create a plugin, I should not present you with the with a solution. We should really experience uh, how to arrive at the solution. So even if I have the solution in mind, and even if I actually have a copy of the files where the solution is there, so I, I can uh, during this stream I might actually relate to these already finished files. I'm going to proceed as if you know I was just uh, I was just a beginner so let's do that um, okay where did we left where did we leave we left at uh, so last week we tried to create a panel and 
we started by creating a module within the uh, folders that we had downloaded uh, from GitHub. So instead of sp speaking empty words, I'm going to just show you. Can you see it? Yeah. So as, as I told you, I have this <laughs> version that works, but we're going to just start where uh, where we were last time, which is that we had this Giphy plugins uh, folder, and we had tried last time to create a module, uh, the Lexical Explorer plugin. Uh, as far as I remember, so if I open it. And open it again. Oh yeah, we have plenty of things in it. So I think that if we really want to start again, I'm going to just delete what is in the source. Okay, so let's delete that to be where we were before everything, uh, you know, got stuck. We were there and we tried to create a plugin and it didn't work. So let's try again. Uh, I, what we did is we used NetBeans, which you can see the icon. Uh, oops. You can see the icon of NetBeans right there. NetBeans is an is a is, is a software that helps you uh, uh, develop programs and software. So uh, instead of just you know opening text files and working on, on text files. We're going to use NetBeans uh, because it provides a lot of convenience to, to code faster. So I'm at the moment I'm opening NetBeans. It's super slow because uh, I'm streaming. So OBS, the software I use to stream, is actually stealing uh, a lot of uh, uh, memory. So let's be patient. I decided I would be super patient today. Also, maybe because I had a good lunch that makes me <laughs> not sleepy, but calm. Okay, NetBeans has opened. I'm going to close the project I was currently working on. Oh, you see a bit of NetBeans there, but that's not relevant. A bit more patience, almost there.
just trying to close my previous projects but everything is as slow as a dead computer the only solution is to wait Well, maybe while it loads, I, there is something I want to explain. So let me do that. Something that I can explain, which is super useful, is you know, you have, why is NetBeans useful? So when you write a Java program, you write, uh, you write your code in text files. And these are called often classes, these text files. So my class dot Java, that would be, I hope you see that, let me, yes. You write code in files like, you know, my class.java. Then what this Java file does not, cannot be executed on a computer, right? Uh, immediately. How do you do that? Then you execute a program called javac c the c in the end is for compiler i guess i'm not sure that turns my class dot java into uh, my class dot class and basically this file, you can open it with a text editor and read it. But once you have compiled it with the Javac program, it turns into this file that you cannot read, but it's actually made, it's, it's full of, it has been turned into a file that a computer reads more easily and much more efficiently than what you have written yourself in the Java file. So the important point is that you use Javac to do that. And then you turn, I wonder, I don't know, all dot class files, you know, the f are uh, grouped into a jar file uh, like into a, a group together into a jar uh, archive but basically into a single jar file you know it, the end the extension is dot jar file it's like a zip file really that contains all the my class dot class that you have compiled and then only can you run your java program can you can you run your program like so you do so in the command line do java so your jar file let's say it's called my program dot jar you do java my program dot jar and this executes your program so what i mean to why do i i'm not giving a class on uh, 
on on Java, right? I'm just saying that uh, it you have a lot of steps. You write your program in myclass.java, then you turn it into myclass. Oops, you don't see it. Let me. You turn it into a file called myclass.class, and then you turn it into a jar file, and then only you can execute it, execute this jar file. My point is to say that you can do all of that uh, by yourself, but it gets super complicated when you have a lot of files and a lot of dependencies and a lot of parameters. So actually, this is why tools like Maven, so instead of doing all of that manually, so to speak, you can use Maven. And oops, and Maven is a program where you do just Maven MVN for Maven. MVN, Maven clean package or clean install. And it transforms all your Java files and their dependencies and more into a jar into a jar file, and then you can do Maven uh, run, and it executes the jar file. So Maven saves you a lot of time uh, compared to the to the case where you would. Uh, uh, do everything by yourself. So let me just show you that. So the first one is all manual, manually. The second case is using Maven instead. And the last thing I want to show you, and that's the end of the story, is using NetBeans or any program instead. NetBeans helps you doing, so it helps you use Maven with click and point. No need to open the command line. Also helps you debug your program, which Maven doesn't do. So I just wanted to write all of that. To You're going to see me use Maven and NetBeans. And you might just be wondering, you know, why? Because Maven is a substitute for you know, using Javac uh, and other command line programs. And NetBeans is a substitute for Maven because you can use Maven from... <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> because thanks to NetBeans, you can be in the click and point mode. You don't need to open a command line interface. But as you're going to see in this session, sometimes things do not work in NetBeans when I use Maven from NetBeans, so I have to reopen the command line and use Maven directly. But thanks to what I just explained, uh, oh, how do you ban somebody like that? Mathieu, I've, I've made you a moderator. I don't know if you, uh, if you are good enough in, uh, in Twitch that you can ban people. Anyway. Uh, so that's why in this tutorial, we're going to be sometimes using Maven, sometimes using NetBeans. I would prefer to use NetBeans all the way, but when it doesn't work, I go back to the command line because uh, it can work better. Okay. And with all this explanation, NetBeans finally opened. I know that's crazy, but OBS takes a long time. So let's open the file that where we were last time. Uh, 
so that's in Twitch, not there. Where is Twitch? <laughs> so as I said, I have, oops, let me zoom in. I have this thing that works, but I want to retrace my step with you from the start. So give in admins that doesn't work. Giphy plugin, sorry. Pop. So this is where we were. Oops, that's ugly. I love that. Let's neglect that. So it's, and if you if you program, this experience is really cringy. You know, it's like, how can it take so much time? So you open Giphy plugins and inside you have a key folder which called modules. A module is a plugin. So potentially within this Giphy plugins project, we could have several plugins, but we are uh, just developing one plugin today. So to open this plugin, we double click on it. And again, that's where we were two weeks ago. Why? Stop opening files for me. Okay, so that's NetBeans. That's NetBeans, sorry. That's the plugin, Lexical Explorer plugin. And it's empty, right? There is no code inside. So let's create some code. So I'm going to right click on the name, on the name of the plugin. I'm going to do new window. That's something we learned from last time, but pretty late in the stream. So it's asking us which position for the window. Ooh, I don't know. Oh. Okay, so where do we want to have the panel uh, the main panel of the plugin, where do we want to have it? Uh, we're going to have it, uh, I think we said layout because it, we were a bit desperate in the end. We, uh, but why not? Well, that's not super great. Uh, but we, ha we don't have, maybe statistics would have been nice, but I don't see statistics there. So let's do, you know, just uh, all properties would be. OK, let's not do anything fancy. Let's just stay with layout, uh, with layout. Yeah. We want to open at application start. And we don't care about all these uh, fancy options. So next. Class name prefix. So we're going to call it. Uh, we're going to call it, uh, we had like simple top component, but let's be a bit more uh, lexical explorer. So lex, lexplorer, explorer, lexplorer, that's a fancy name. We don't have an icon yet. And we're going to Put it in the default package. Package is blank or malformed. It's not happy with that. Oh, we should put a package name. Okay. So I'm gonna do like net.clement levalois dot uh, lexical explorer. Lexical explorer. Okay, fine. And next finish. So I clicked on finished. Oh, and it says so I made a mistake somewhere. It says, oops. It said there is no manifest file to edit. And I think that's a file I mistakenly deleted uh, when I when I reset the code for today so i'm going to resort to so this file you should have it uh, 
Damn it, where is it? Somewhere here, yeah. So I should have this end. I should not have a complete empty plugin. I should have source, main, NBM. You know, source, main, NBM, and inside that I should have a manifest.mf plugin. So let's let's do that. So this is the I'm in the you know. I'm in the working version of the plugin. I'm going to just move back to, to the version we are working in. So source, main, NBM. And inside that, we should have a file called manifest. Dot mf and we're gonna copy in it the working version I had from the other project oops it's not gonna open because an mf extension is not super clear yes so the, as you see, the, the file is super small, but super important. So I'm going to show you the content of the file uh, actually right away. Let me go back to our project, Giphy plugins, module, lexical explorer, source, main, NBM, manifest, right click, open in the text editor, paste. So what do we have? A manifest version which is boring but that that line is important because it uh, it states that we're gonna use a, a graphical interface for the uh, for the plugin uh, we defined the plugin as a tool and open ID module localizing module uh, bundle so this one is uh, this one I'm gonna show you later why it matters so let me I'm gonna this this one I'm, we're gonna write it together so let me put it on hold right there uh, so I save this manifest I'm back in NetBeans because you know it complained there is no manifest to edit so now I have added one so finish finish there and let's hope things work so things are moving indeed there ooh look at that So it has created um, a window, a graphic window. We can we're gonna be able to add buttons and text on it. But we can access the source, so we can access the code that generates this window. So clicking on source, I can see the the code behind these graphics. And material, remember this. This is where we were last time, and this is where we were stuck. Uh, OK, so what does it say? Uh, oh, sorry, I don't have the book with me. Where? Just, just a, a, a moment, I'm coming back. So if you are really into that, uh, you will be interested in this book, which is the, the reference book for the NetBeans uh, software, and especially NetBeans being used 
to develop programs as we do now, like plugins for Giphy. And it has, so it's pretty old and uh, uh, frankly outdated, but that's still the best reference you can find on, uh, on let me show you, on all of these things. It describes in all details, so you, you, that's a really a good investment. It describes in details uh, the meaning and uh, the, the role of all these uh, 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 actions. So let me, yeah. So what I learned from the book is that converts as properties, well, you can leave it alone. It's like, uh, it's basically, uh, it has no impact on the, on the code. It's something that is really internal to, to, the, to the software. Then, uh, preferred ID, okay, uh, that's an arbitrary name. Uh, mode, layout mode, because that we, that's what we asked, that it's going to create a panel within the layout uh, section of Giphy, open at startup. Then action ID, action ID is, uh, again, that's specific to NetBeans and it describes the f I mean, it, it defines the fact that uh, the, 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 the panel is going to have an action and, and very, a very simple one, like just being displayed. If you don't have the action to be displayed, the, the panel is not, not displayed. So an action associated to a top component I mean, the default action that you see here is simply the one that will uh, display the component. Uh, there, it tells you where should the action originate from. Well, uh, the panel is going to be displayed if you uh, click on the menu window in Giphy. Then, what should be the name of the what should be the name of the menu? You know, like when you're on the menu, you want to display the panel, what should be shown there? And preferred ID, uh, I suppose that it should be the same as above. Uh, maybe it can be different, but I wouldn't really do it. So display name, you see there is something weird, like it's CTL underscore whatever, and there is a, a hashtag before. Uh, yes. So this is exactly where uh, there is something important. NetBeans is a, and Java in general is super powerful in the sense that it allows you to translate easily how uh, the text of your software. Uh, you can of course write everything in your interface in English or French or whatever uh, language you prefer, but it's also super convenient for the users from anywhere on the world in the world that they can display the plugin in the language they prefer. So how do you do that? What you do is that you don't write the text in your software because then it would stay in the language you have chosen. You write a kind it's you write a, simply the name of a property like title, so here the property we are interested in is the title of, you know, the menu item in Giphy that when we click on it, it opens our plugin. Again, to repeat, we are in Giphy, we, we look in the menu, we want to open uh, the, the plugin. What is going to, what's going to be the name of the, the plugin in the menu? Uh, it could be one single name, but we could have a different name for, for different languages. Uh, so in this case, uh, as I said, we're going to just write the name of a property and depending on your language is going to find the language version. Uh, sorry, it's not clear. It's going to, it's going to, find the, the uh, with the name of this property, 
is going to fetch the corresponding value of the property in the language that you prefer. So one property name, as many values as you have languages. So let's do that. So display name should be the name of the property and it should start with the hash. But CTL, whatever, we don't care. So hash and followed by the name of our property. I suggest we call it menu menu item or even better Giphy menu item title and actually I have conventions from other projects that I follow I would uh, I'm gonna do something different I'm gonna follow the conventions I'm used to general my general is not that useful uh, pop, 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 pop. I think I do, I do expression menu yeah Giphy menu item title so if you uh, maybe you don't really care but uh, personally I find it pretty useful to have these conventions expression because we're going to use an expression not a noun not a verb not a paragraph just you know a short expression so that's the first category then what is it about it's the Giphy menu item and then so often we have title or content and in this case that's title okay so we do that but we get a warning from from NetBeans that says no key you know no property name found in in net.clermontlevalois.lexicolexplorer.bundle and by the way just be uh, just be below it says could not locate the net.clermontlevalois.lexicolexplorer.bundle.properties in source path and that's super important so basically where do you store your property names and the corresponding uh, values in all the language that languages that you like you do that in other sources so in other sources you have nbm but as far as i remember you 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 can add you should add a specific place to store your properties and values so let's go back to our, our uh, files in the file explorer we are in lexical explorer plugin oh you don't see that well uh, how can i sorry i want to zoom that's better so source main and then you have java nbm and I'm going to add resources, uh, uh, resources folder. And once I have done that, let's go back to NetBeans. We should see it in NetBeans, actually, I think. Yeah, you see it's here. And then we can just right click and create a package or a folder, let's say a folder. Well, let's create a package instead because then I can do I can do net Clément Levalois dot uh, lexical lex, how do I call that lexical explorer lexical explorer and that's it I suppose net Clément Levalois lexical explorer uh, yeah Well, I'm going to do something else. No, I don't know. I'm going to stop there. Well, we'll see. Finish. OK, so this folder is empty at the moment, right? That's why it's all gray. 
and then we just create what it needs a bundle.properties file which is empty and in this file we're going to add this thing here so without the leading hash so we're going to do that top equals so the equal sign separates the name of the property and the value and the value is going to be uh, lexical explorer plugin so yeah that's really simple and i save the bundle file and if we back you see that the warning sign has disappeared uh, but we're not finished because actually where is the manifest file the manifest file was there we need to we need to add in the manifest file the we need to say to the plugin where is our bundle file and that's what i had left here you see the name open id module localizing localizing means you know translating and adapting to local linguistic contexts so i'm copy paste copying that from before and i'm pasting that in my manifest file uh, I should have reloaded let me reload this file why so I'm not saving that let's go, I'm gonna do that directly from NetBeans hop paste and let me check that the the value is correct indeed oh you don't see it that well uh, net dot Clement or slash Clement Levalois slash lexical explorer plugin. Ah, but you see that's not exactly the same. It's not lex I just called it lex lexical explorer. So what I mean is that the value here, sorry, the value here should be the the path there. So net slash Clement Levalois slash lexical explorer and slash bundle dot properties that's it and i save that okay back to here why is there this little stuff here no no it doesn't complain anymore preferred id as i say it is an arbitrary uh message messages i don't know but messages let me let me check in the book or oh, if i think it's completely optional i'm gonna delete it but maybe we can uh, understand what it makes and we're gonna keep it well i don't have it here messages Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see that elsewhere in the book. So it's probably uh, it's probably optional. So let's delete that. Okay, I'm deleting that. Okay, we have that. I'm saving the file. Then, oh, that's an interesting one. So this is the, yeah, so if you don't code in Java, let me give you a quick uh, walkthrough. 
So the package name is very simply, this is that should that you just copy the you know the place in the folder where you are. So net.clementvalois.lexicalexplorer, that's exactly what you see in the package name. Then a list of uh, Java code that is needed in the file. So import followed by uh, the, the, the location of the, of the Java bits you're going to need. And, and NetBeans is helpful when there is one bit of import that you don't need anymore. It just highlights it. And when you click on the little helpful, you know, bulb in the margin, so I'm clicking on it, it tells you you can remove this unused import. So I just click on it and it removes it for me. Then the file starts really in earnest there. Before that, and it's really typical of uh, frameworks like NetBits, you have annotations. And these annotations are often super specific to the framework you're using. So if, like me, you are not familiar with these uh, NetBeans platforms uh, on a daily basis, uh, you often struggle to understand these parameters because, you know, it's not regular Java programming. It's like super specific to this tool. And the real Java code starts there. Uh, so that's the name of the class there. There. It's a class. And that's the constructor here. And most of the code has been generated for us because let me go back to the design, right? The code generates that and I have written no code. So NetBeans has been useful and has generated a lot of code. Actually, it's there. I can unfold it. It has generated a lot of code to create the window. But it's just to help me. I, I didn't do that myself. So it, oh, and it, you know, init components, that's the first method, which is here. And same, you can, oh, that's the one I just showed you, I think, yeah. So init components, then set a name, and set the name of the component, you see that it tries to, you know, you, you recognize that it, it suggests the name of a, uh, of uh, like it it wants to get the name of a property from our bundle but that's not the proper way so let me there i'm going to get a bit of help from my from my project that works let me go back to my project that works i'm going to just find a bit of the line of code i need uh, come on, come on. Where is it? Yeah, that's this one. Oh, that's not complicated. Okay, that's actually super simple. I thought it was more complicated than that. Okay, I'm just leaving there back to NetBeans. So what you, how do you access the properties that you have created in your, you know, bundle.properties? Either you access them as we did before, simply with, uh, where is it? Where is it? There. Simply with a dash, uh, with a hash, but that works only when you are in these annotations. That's actually highly unusual to uh, to, to, you know, to access properties with the hash. It works just for these annotations. In Java code, you need to do things differently. You need to do things like, so you have a, a, a Java object, which is called resource bundle. And this thing helps you retrieve and access the properties from your bundle properties. So in practice, uh, 
Yeah, I suppose so. I, I'm a bit skeptical, but let's do it. In practice, it gets the bundle from... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure it's going to work, but... Yeah, that's what should be used. I don't have a good explanation for that. And resource bundle, you need to import the resource corresponding to it. So you just click on the light bulb and you import. Ooh, should it be the... So it should be the open e IDE util. Oh, that should be both. I'm stupid. You have to import both. No, no difficulty. And then bundle. This is what you use to retrieve your key. So bundle get string and you're going to get the name of your uh, panel. So I'm going to call it that's an expression again. Top panel title. Pretty good, right? And we don't have that one in the bundle properties file yet, so let's add it. I'm just clicking on bundle properties. And I'm giving it actually the same, well, not exactly the same name. I'm going to just call it Lexical Explorer in this case. And if we back there, it should stop complaining. Yeah, it has stopped complaining that it couldn't find the property name because I've just added it. Same issue for the tooltip, you know, the little uh, bubble that appears when you use the mouse and you just hover. So we're going to just copy that there. And often it's a bit of a, you know, it's a piece of information. So expression, top panel, title, Uh, no, tooltip. Okay, I'm going to add this property there. And we can be a bit more explicit here. This panel helps you explore the lexical information related to a group of nodes. Why not right? Okay, we have done that. We can go back to Lex. We stopped complaining there. That's it. I don't have any error. I'm not saying it's, not saying it's going to compile, right? But uh, at least there is no error. So now I can let me go back to the explanation that I had. You know, now I have written a Java file. Uh, you know, let me go back here. You know, we have just written a Java file. And to run the program, let me go back here. We could either manually open the command line and tap Javac and then whatever, whatever, whatever. Or we could use Maven. But through NetBeans, we could NetBeans is supposed to provide access to Maven through a click and point fashion. So let's try that. When I do right click, clean and build, it's actually compiling the uh, the, the the Java files in my plugin. So let me share that with you here. Oh, you don't see it up. Yeah, more like so. So it's starting. Uh, it's going to be super slow compared to what it should be doing usually. But again, OBS is stealing all my resources. So there is a, a, a warning, but not an error. Oh, it has. OK, build success. And then what we had done last time was to 
click on Giphy and run. And I think that's where it failed, but let's try it ag again, who knows. So behind the scenes, uh, NetBeans is invoking uh, Maven. And it's launching Giphy with our plugin inside. Okay, first error, the manifest file for the project, you know, for our plugin should contain an open ID module name entry. I think there was one, that's the mystery here. So let's check the manifest file. Oh yes, there is no module name indeed. So let's check my, you know, my, the copy that works. Can you see it? No, my copy that works is there. Modules, lexical source, main, nbm manifest, right click to open it. No, it has no, ah, uh, oh, I don't know. So what was NetBeans complain, complaining? It wanted a... Open ID module name. So I suppose it's somewhere in Giphy there. Let me open... <laughs> Well, let me open the thing that works. Not there. Not there. Maybe there. Not sure. Okay, I suppose we have the same in the one we are working on. Yeah, right. I think I know. I think I know. I'm sure I know. Uh, okay, let's go back to the to the. Yes, I know. Now I know. Uh, let's go back to the one that is working. So, okay, I think I know the what NetBeans was complaining to launch our module was that you know. Let me show you. Like the our our module our plugin should have the property OpenID module name and it can't find it. And that's true, we don't have it. But why is, you know, why is it working with my other file that it doesn't contain it either? Actually, it does contain it, but elsewhere. Where? In the bundle properties. In the bundle properties file, again, that's the file that I'm gonna use to put all the things that should be, you know, translated. Uh, later in all the language you, you want. Uh, you don't have just that, you also have... Uh, you also have uh, properties that NetBeans needs. So just to repeat that in a clearer way, important properties to get your plugin working are a bit scattered in two places a bit in this bundle properties file and you would place them if your intent is to translate them 
and the other place where they are are there right so and that makes sense in this manifest file you should place only the properties that will never be translated and you know uh, this thing is not going to be translated it's going to stay the, as it is but the one that NetBeans can't find and that's going to repeat I'm a bit of a repeater as you see but this one the open ID module name uh, you don't see it here uh, now I remember that I placed it in the bundle properties file because this one the name we might want to to translate it so let's be let's go to the my version that works because now I remember that it's not going to be the only property that is in the bundle properties file that we're going to need uh, there might be others so let's take all of them so resources whatever 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 bundles bundle property sorry I open it ah you see all these things so there is the name indeed it's there but also the short description the long description you remember them from the last time from the time from two weeks ago this is where they are so I'm gonna copy them from this project oh by the way why is it you know it's not oh I'm a bit surprised we have this double this semicolon there I suppose an equal sign would be safer so I'm gonna be bold and replace these semicolons with an equal sign because because in a property file you should have equal signs so it's party up paste so we have the name we have the short description and as I said I think it's safer to well I will see if I'm it's just you know a bit pretentious but I think it's really that and I leave some space I think we can introduce comments there yeah a comment in in a property file starts with a, a hash so uh, below our properties oh no actually below our user defined properties and I'm gonna call that uh, netbeans or properties required by netbeans to run the plugin and and yeah that's that that should be I'm not sure it's going to compile but at least we've done something useful there okay I start again the compilation I mean the to run oh no I should first first I should recompile the plugin with this new information so right click click and build clean and build So what do we have here? Yeah, the compilation's finished. Actually, you know, it's pretty fast. And then we run. I don't expect it to succeed, uh, but at least we should go past the, the error we, we had. So far, so good. Oula, 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 oula. I think it oh come on I think it <sighs> I fear it's expanding the whole Giphy code base which is not supposed to do If it 
if it's really doing that, then either I stop the process because it's so long or I go and grab a coffee and so could you. Ooh. Well, I'm going to go and check how many viewers there are on Twitch. Three viewers. Wow, what a crowd. You could say hi in the comments. Okay, that's super long, but you know, in the... It might be, it might just work. So it's worth... Uh, Taking the time. I'm not sure actually because with OBS running, it could. Uh, I have no clue how long it can take. So, and my, my plan B is to, you know, stop using NetBeans for this and use Maven instead. is we're all gonna die of old age <sighs> should we 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 stop I'm a bit afraid that even if I I use Maven, Maven is gonna also is also gonna have to go through that. I don't know. It's worse. I think it's worth it. In the meantime, I'm going to check on the book what this thing about messages were. I mean, I'm surprised it's not appearing in the book because it was a super, it was super NetBeans specific. So I would have expected it to be described in the book. So it's an annotation, maybe at the annotation entry of the index.
Gephi is launching. Gephi is launching. So, uh, yeah, okay, that's not the end of it, but at least Giphy is launching. Which takes, again, a lot of time compared to what you would experience at home. Okay, let me show you how it looks. So, Giphy... Ladies and gentlemen, and bingo, the lexical explorer is there, right? It's empty, of course, but now if we want to add something to, oh, sorry, you see nothing. <laughs> I was saying, Gephi has finally opened and lo and behold, we have a lexical explorer panel there. And if we go back to our, uh, if we go back to our NetBeans project, let me click on design. What you see here is actually, oops, no, 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 don't launch Kefi, I meant the other one, oh, catastrophe. What you see here is what you see there. So oh, I've launched the real Giphy just by mistake. Sorry, I just have to wait that it opens and I then I close it. But anyway, what you see, so I, I think you it's clear. Okay, I can close this thing now. I hope it's clear to you that what we see in Giphy here is what we see in NetBeans there. So whatever uh, we're gonna add there is gonna appear in our plugin for real. So let's do that as a, as, as a conclusion because that's the end of the stream. Uh, by the way, where do we do that? Uh, in, in NetBeans, you do window palette, I think. Window ID tools palette, maybe? Yeah. And you get a menu of things you can add to your graphs, to your, sorry, to your graphics interface, graphical interface. So we're gonna add a label, which is a piece of text. And to do that, you just drag it. So I'm gonna give you the full view. You drag it to your hop. It's there, and then you want to change their text. So, hello, da hello, welcome to my plugin, of course, to my plugin. Enter. And actually, then, of course, we're gonna do a lot of stuff next time, but hello, welcome to my plugin. And then, so what you should do is close the version of Giphy that was running, so you close it. And then I'm afraid to say that in order to visualize what you just did as a modification, you have to redo the whole process. Uh, I just hope that the launching of Giphy is going to be super quick and not go through the long phase. But anyway, that's how you would do. You would right click, clean and build. Again, you see, it's not that long. Well, it's going to take 20 seconds, let's say. Uh, that should be much quick. Actually, that's going to be much quicker. Uh, again, I have OBS running, so that's why it's just taking forever. I have a powerful computer, right? It's just... Uh... OK, 
because I'm streaming and I'm recording in high quality. Anyway, the plugin has been compiled, so now it has this button. And now you can relaunch Giphy. And this is where I expect it to be quicker than before, like much quicker. But I also expect it not to take into account our button. At least that's what I experienced last time. It's going to relaunch it as it was before. And in this case, I'm going to show you how to how to uh, see convert this issue. Yeah, you see it's executing Giphy without uh, compiling whatever. So it's going to take, I would say, 30 seconds for me. But for you, that would be uh, 5, to 10, 5 to 10 seconds. So Giphy is actually opening on my computer. Oh, and you see it here. And you see the Lexical Explorer here. And you see there is no button, right? And that's what, that's the issue we had last week. Whatever modifications we are making to the code, we launched Giphy and nothing was happening. We were supposed to see a button there. So I'm closing Giphy. And what I'm going to do is exactly the reason why I gave you this boring lesson at the beginning about, where, where was it? You know about how do you go from Java to running a Java program? So we tried at the moment, we just tried using NetBeans to launch Maven. It didn't work. Giphy, when we launched it, did not run with the plugin we just compiled. So we're going to do it the Maven way. So I open my Explorer. I go back to so not, you know, that's, I have two projects. The one is the one I, that works, but the one we just worked on today is this one. So I click on this one. And then I open the command line, line interface at this, at this location of my files. So on Windows, I would do shift right click. Oops, you don't see. So let me do that. Uh, Shift right click, open the PowerShell window. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm just going to run Maven, but that's what NetBeans was supposed to do from the graphical interface. But at least we sound like we look like more like we are real, you know, coders and stuff. So Maven, uh, oh, actually, actually, there is a specific uh, way to launch it which is provided by, I mean, it was explained in the, you know, in the Giphy plugins GitHub web page. So yeah, this one, it's Maven and you run org.giphy, Giphy Maven plugin, run. And I hope, I really hope that it's going to launch Giphy with our plugin inside, updated, you know, with the latest version of the plugin. Uh, and we're going to be able to see the the button we have created. And if he doesn't, I'm going to be so sad. OK, Giphy is launching. I knew that. But the question is, is it going to show the, the plugin? It definitely uh, should. OK, Giphy is launching. Oh, I don't see the button. Awful. Oh, I'm dead. There is no button, right? Where is my button? Oh, maybe it's like hidden somewhere. No button. Oh, no. No, no button at all. Maybe I didn't save the class. That could be that. Let's go back there. I hope it's that. No, it's not even that. Right, if I save it. So let's not panic. It's really supposed to.
Let's do it again. Clean and build for the plugin. I don't get it. Honestly, I don't get it. Simple button. Okay, so the plugin should be almost finished compiling, right? Okay, done. And then when we are back on the command line, oh, I should stop Giphy first. Come on, it's finished. And then when I, when I run it, I mean, it should take the plugin into account. If not, what is it? Let's think hard. Maybe, maybe it's not the proper command, but I, I really thought it was. Let me double check, check on the Giphy plugins web page. Make sure to run Maven package beforehand to rebuild. Okay, I, I hope it's what I forgot to do. So let's do it, right? Maven package. I hope it's the thing. makes kind of sense yeah you see it integrates in Giphy the, the plugin we have just
created. I hope it doesn't take forever. Yeah, pretty, I'm pretty hopeful there. Oh yeah, yeah, you see. Yeah, and then only you do, you know, you do the, you do, let me, then only you do that, I think. Okay, so Maven package and then that. So executing. Uh, executing Giphy, I see Giphy launching. And I'm fully confident we're gonna see a button in our plugin. Come on, Giffy. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Can you see what I see? Ah, it's not a button, by the way. I just made a label. That's what I call a big success. Okay, so objectives, the objective has been achieved. I'm super happy. I'm super happy of that. Okay, so I should really document, I mean, this video, once it's gonna be posted in on re in replay on YouTube uh, with chapters, that's going to be a super good documentation. Uh, but uh, yes, Mathieu, <laughs> I'm super happy. Uh, so the the yeah the video is going to be a good tutorial once it, it's it's edited with chapters so that you can skip the super long moments we spent there. And also the a few written, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a short written documentation is gonna is gonna be easy to extract. Like, don't forget the Maven package uh, stage. Uh, yeah. Whew. Well, I'm super happy because as you see where we landed, we landed at the point where finally we can we can do do stuff like uh, work on the business logic of the of the plugin and not just uh struggling like hell with some uh uh with some setup stuff hi veronica well very interesting well thank you yes uh interesting potentially right we are at the at the beginning of something that hopefully will be interesting but uh, <laughs> it was mostly uh, blood and tears uh, again for today. Okay, well, uh, we were past one hour, but uh, not two hours and a half like uh, last week where nothing could be sorted out. So just an hour and a half and we succeeded. So I feel happy and that's one of the reasons why I, I love coding and uh, I love uh, sharing uh, stuff it's because uh when it works uh it's, it just opens plenty of possibilities so so i'm gonna stop there as usual and i'm gonna just you know hang around with my uh, it's not a cup of coffee it's a glass of water but i'm gonna play the twitch uh, streamer for a couple of minutes uh, merci mathieu ça me touche beaucoup ça me touche beaucoup Et euh, ouais, et, et, et les, les fois prochaines, the next times are going to be, uh, I hope we can leverage all these difficulties we passed to finally get to some, uh, you know, some uh, juicy stuff.
<clears throat> so I'm just spending a couple of minutes on the you know the resource folder the resource uh, Google Doc So it's not exactly what I had written. Oh, and I should push also what I did to the repo. Yeah, let's do this last part. But I'm gonna edit. Yeah, I'm gonna edit that out of the of the replay. But if you are interested, that's how it would work. Simply git status to see where we are. <laughs> I'm not in the right place, so let me. Uh... So you should be in the folder where you want to push stuff and then. Well, basically, I don't care. Git add everything. Everything is a star. I'm going to commit with something like that says uh, <coughs> uh, first panel created. Bundle properties file created, manifest file, okay, uh, compiles and deploys, okay, nice, and then I push. That's it. And now if I'm back on the resource, so that's what I'm doing before leaving. So it's actually untrue what I have written here. I'm going to close the bin. Sorry, I'm doing. I'm going to close as much as I can because it's. So slow with OBS, everything is slow. I'm going to close Giphy as well. Bye bye, little plugin. So we were November the 30th, I think. Yeah. Part two. A panel finally. Soon, uh, 
to run the plugin. What do we want to do next week? Uh, maybe we're gonna get hard in the NLP text mining stuff. Wow, that's gonna be hard. Uh, wow. <laughs> well, you know, why not? Uh, start experimenting. is a toy network that has text a textual attribute. But that's it, right? We are we are ready to go. There is nothing no more setup to do. That's the brilliant thing. I mean, we, we, we will add more setups later. I'm going to show you how to do, how to translate in 100 languages uh, super easily, but all of that is optional. It's like, we, we are really just to, to go and work. The setup had worked. Where is Ah oui, ça a marché. Ah, mais là, tu vois, oh là, peut-être que j'ai tout écrasé. On s'en fout. Allez. Let's 
it to it's all I had to remember. Yeah, I suppose so. Ali. Bye everyone. Thanks a lot.